right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Nicole Jansen, who is actually in San Diego as well. How are you doing, Nicole? I'm doing fantastic, John. Glad to be here. Yeah, we could have literally done this in person, but there you go. Um, all right. So what we're going to talk about today is transformational leadership. And uh, uh, Nicole has over the th last past 30 years has been coaching and training thousands of leaders and helping them ex uh, achieve extraordinary results in business and in life. And she's a certified human behavioral specialist, transformational business coach, uh, and strategic intervention coach, and a master facilitator. And what we're and what we want to talk about today is, I mean, obviously leadership is is changing, and the way people approach leadership is changing and evolving. But perhaps in in sales, it lags a little behind because. Just the nature of the way of way sales often operates is that the leaders in sales kind of come up through the ranks. They're maybe the, they're often the successful, the top salespeople, then they get promoted into management. They last uh, an average about 15 months uh, because they tend not to be given uh, the the training or the guidance or whatever to even to for basic management, let alone kind of leadership and let alone transformational leadership where we're talking about the whole changing circumstances in business, people being virtual, multi-generational. So there's a lot of challenges uh, there, Nicole. So um, what are your thoughts about uh, tradition? I mean, you've been in sales, so traditional sales leadership and where it needs to go in terms of transformation. Yeah, great question, John. And, and what you mentioned there about salespeople who become successful and then get promoted to sales manager it's a very different skill set, as you know, right? So you, you know, you're to be a salesperson, to be a successful salesperson, you've got to be the achiever. You're the one driving it. And as a sales manager, now you've got to take your eyes off of yourself and build up others. And sometimes that is actually counterintuitive for a salesperson because they were so used to selling themselves. And so now it's not about you. And it honestly, it never was, of course, we know that, but that's a whole other, we can go down that rabbit hole. Um, but let's staying here, you know, is when you think about, it's not about, not about you as a leader. One of the things that I teach leaders and, and, you know, business entrepreneurs um, is all about people. And it's all about sales We're we're selling ourselves all the time, you know, is to understand that a, it's not about you and B it's when you're when you're managing and leading other people, you've got to understand who they are. So I use like the DISC model, human behavior and strengths finder and different things to be able to understand who the people are that you're actually managing and why that's important in terms of transformation is because yes, we, you know, sales has this traditional way. It's like, well, this has worked. It's always worked. And so we're going to keep doing it. But I would challenge it and say, is it working though? Is it really working? And now more than ever with the change as people are working from home and, and there's just a different, you know, different priorities, concerns, people are stressed out, you know, they're, they're worried about their financial mm -hmm. security. They're worried about their health. They're worried about their families and all this stuff. You've got to be able to understand where people are at. And as I said, going, getting outside yourself and looking, going into the other person's world to really understand where they're at because leaders um, it, you know, leadership is really about bringing out the best in others. And so that's where I believe it really starts. And of course that starts with you have, you gotta get, you gotta get who you are. You know, I just finished actually a conversation with a financial advisor, a client of mine, and I was challenging him as who are you being and how do you dis differentiate who you are as a spiritual being, if you will, to who you are choosing to be or being, right? And what game are you playing? And so it's really getting to understand yourself because transformation starts with awareness. Mm -hmm. And then there's a choice. What am I going to do with that? And then there's the follow through and the action, which actually creates the transformation ultimately. Yeah, and I think there's a number of things that you referenced there that I just want to I want to pick up on. And I, mean, I think the first one is is absolutely correct. Kind of a, as as salespeople, it's often it's it's a lonely road. It's kind of a personal journey sometimes. And so 
you become very, very self-sufficient. Therefore, when promoted into a leadership position, that's, as you said, that's, it's very counterintuitive in many ways. And I think the other thing is, oftentimes it's the, the idea of leadership is just watch, do what I do do what I did. This is how I was successful. Just do what I did. And the, and the problem is that that's the, uh, they're often unconsciously competent. So they can never actually explain to you how they did it or how they do it. And they just say, Oh, just watch me and do it. And that doesn't really, and that doesn't work because obviously now they have a lot of different people with different needs. And I think that's becoming more, more prevalent the the, the idea of, you know, people need to be communicated to in different ways. They need to be nurtured and led in different ways. There's no one size fits all. And, and maybe once upon a time, that's what people used to think. Okay, there's one style of leadership that driving forward and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point about um, doing it the same way that you've seen it, I don't know about you, but I know people that have been successful in sales. And if I tried to do the same thing that they did, it wouldn't work for me. In fact, I remember when I started off my career 30 plus years ago and I was in sales going door to door. And then I started doing phone calls because I realized that was going to be more efficient than to make a bunch of phone calls, save myself the travel time. And then I figured out that there were networking events that I could go to and meet a whole bunch of people at once. That was awesome. Well, when I first started out doing that, I was told, you know, follow this script. When they, when you say this, they'll say that. And then do you see, say this? And I had my flow chart. I literally had a piece of paper in front of me with the flow chart of how I was going to lead through this conversation. So I get on the phone and I start talking to this person and immediately, you know, what's, what's coming, right? They didn't follow the script. And so somebody else, it might've worked for them, but that didn't work for me. And that, so that didn't work back then. That's why I say, is it really the mm -hmm. way that it worked? Or is it just that there was a there was certain people or a certain personality type that gravitated to sales and kind of got molded by the sales industry versus what we're seeing now is people, and especially young people, they don't want to be like anybody else. They want, they're asking questions like, why am I doing this? And what's, you know, what's the whole purpose of this? And, you know, and they want to be individual and authentic and vulnerable and all these words are coming out. And so now you've got like the cats out of the bag It is going to be hard to get the cat back in the bag. And you know what, you don't need to try to even do that because it's mm -hmm. going to create, it's going to create such greater opportunity because the truth is, you know, like I think back, even back then when I was making phone calls and I was again, still trying to follow this type of script, if you will, or what I thought was the right way to do it. And I was having absolutely no success. And then I, it occurred to me one day and I'm like, well, Nicole, if somebody called you and said this to you, would you be interested? <laughs> and I was like, no, I wouldn't be. And it's like, well, why are you doing that? But we see it every day on social media. We see mm -hmm. people sending messages and they're like, Hey, great to meet you. Thanks for connecting here. Buy my stuff. Oh, and, yeah. and it's like, would you want people to do that to you? Would you be excited? I mean, maybe some would, but I wouldn't. So no. yeah, it's, it's a, it's very different. You got to adapt. So principles in sales and in business and relationship marketing principles don't change, but methods do. Mm -hmm. So, and, and yeah, and by the way, you just hit on one of my pet peeves there is on, you know, like LinkedIn, when people send you this lovely personalized uh, connection invite, and then you go, okay, and you click connect, and then up pops the automatic email with the pitch. <laughs> I just think it's one of the worst things that LinkedIn did was have those auto emails. But yeah, coming back to what you're saying there, so it's a, it, it, it is quite challenging because it's quite a balancing act, as you said, is because you have all of these people and they have all their, you know, their individuality and their, all their different needs and everything. And you can't sort of you can't customize everything to every single individual because that would just drive you absolutely crazy in the end. And who has time for that? But so how do you how do you strike the balance from being transformational and helping people be fulfilled, but at the same time still being able to be efficient and effective when running a, a large group of people? Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, there's principles and then there's practices, methods. 
So in this context, principles, there's certain principles of sales. Like when you're handling objections, for example, rather than memorizing a, a response, it's not about the memorization because your prospects are going to ask a different one, different way or a different one. But if you can teach the principles, acknowledge, ask a question, identify, is this an emotional objection? Is this an intellectual objection? What am I dealing with here? Right. So you start. So what I do is I teach people the principles and then they can they can color it with their personality and also understanding the personalities to understand that. Great. I know who I am. Right. This is the way I communicate. But when I'm in a sales uh, or a management or any other relational interaction, if my goal is connection and communication, then I need to understand who they are and what they need from me. So some people need detail. Some people don't want all the detail. They want the executive summary. Some people are more motivated by harmony and how is this going to work to build, bring more harmony and, and more connection within our community or our company. Others want to know who, who else is buying their product. But if you don't understand that and you're trying to like one size fits all, you have a, a small chance of being able to hit, to hit it on the head, you know, and, and to do it, uh, do it in such a way that they will connect to it. So as a, as I said, teaching principles of sales, teaching principles of relationship building, rapport building, teaching the principles of business. And then from there are descripts work. Sure. But then you, then you, if you understand who it is that you are and who you're dealing with, then you can say the same thing four different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I had a, I had a client and, and they were in the uh, tax credits, you know, the, the shreds um, science yeah. and research tax credits, and they were having trouble. They said, our sales team is having a really hard time getting the meeting, but once they get the meeting, there is a high closing rate. And so I said, well, tell me what's going on. So when the, when they get in the meeting, they bring a consultant with them and they're talking and I said, who's the, who's the customer? Who's the prospect? And they said, well, they're CFOs largely. So, okay, so let's look at your sales team. And a sales team is a bunch of D's and I personality, dominant, inspiring, outgoing, you know, salespeople, right? Yep. Yep. Trying to talk to a CFO going, oh yeah, don't worry about the details. Just trust me. It'll be good. Or, or and like, I'm paraphrasing, right? But I mean, sure. that's, that's the kind of essence, right? So, but when they get in the meeting and they bring the consultant, the engineering consultant, not just any consultant, they bring the engineering consultant in the meeting, the engineer, who's also the detail analytic person, personality, they're talking to the CFO and the CFO goes, oh yeah, I get it. This totally makes sense. Now they make the sales. So do you replace the sales force and with a whole bunch of people that are C personality or the, mm-hmm. you know, cautious analytical types? No, you teach your current sales team how to talk a different language, to explain and, and relate to the CFO for what the CFO needs to know in that moment. Not so much about, because we see things as we are, not as they are. But when we get to see it, how they are, it changes everything. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great that's a great point. And sometimes you even need to do that if you're selling to maybe a group, a you know, committee that you may have uh, you may have five people on the Zoom call or in the room, and you may have the analytical person, the high level person, and you have to adapt to each of them. So I think it's a it's a really good point here that you make is the fact that you know, focus on focus on them, figure out who they are, and then adapt your your message to to them. The other thing I just wanted to pick up on, and I think this is a struggle for people a lot of times nowadays, is because we live in this very distracted world. We live in this, you know, we we say, I, I love when people tell me that they're busier than they've ever been, because I always say, are you though, really? Are you just more distracted than you've ever been? Because I would think it's the latter. Um, uh, but being present, I think that is one of the biggest challenges that people have is like really just, as you said, focusing in on the other person, like really on trying to understand what's going on without getting distracted by other things or, or not just really just not being completely present in the conversation, whether it's face to face or over Zoom or on the phone or whatever. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of, of teaching people how to be present 
in order to be present, you also, that's not just from the distractions. That's also mm-hmm. your own agenda. Cause yeah. we go into meetings, we go into conversations oftentimes with our own biases and our agenda, what we want out of it. And we're trying to drive to that outcome. And when we're doing that, we're actually missing the cues. We're missing what they're actually saying. And we're not connecting. It's kind of like it's dropping in the, in the chasm in between. And so, yeah, when you can be present and just set aside your own agenda, obviously you've got into, Hey, when you go into a meeting, you book a meeting with an intention. So you, you go in with that, but once you're in the meeting, you already know what that intention is, that objective bottom line. I want to book another appointment Mm -hmm. or I want to get a sale or whatever it is, or I want to, you know, uh, make a further connection with this person, whoever it is you're talking to. And uh, that's great. But once you're in the meeting, then you're fully present with that person and listening to what they're saying, listening to their body language, listening to what they're not saying that you kind of feel and you can pick it up. And that is so powerful. I mean, as a coach, I've taught other coaches, you know, how to be better coaches. And they say, what's the, what's the seeker? What's the, what's the thing? What's the number one thing? And I'd say, you know what, be present, get your own story out of the way. If your story and your stuff is blocking it, forget all the other distractions of like what's happening, you know, at home and all of that, but just what's happening with you inside. Mm -hmm. And right now we've got a lot of people who are, you know, distracted by the news and the the COVID and the vaccinated and the non vaccinated and the this and that and all that stuff. And you got to clear your mind. So before you go into any meeting, do a little reset and say, okay, I'm just going to like let that go. There's nothing that I can do about that in the next hour or however long it is your meeting is. And just be right here. And you'll be able to create magic. You'll be able to create memorable moments right here, right now. Don't live in the past. Don't live in the future. Just live in right now. Yeah. I mean, that's so, that's very, that's so powerful because, uh, like I said, unfortunately, I think it's, it's, it, I, unfortunately, I think it's a societal problem today because, I mean, think of it yourself. How often have you, do you have just regular personal conversations with people and they're, you know, maybe friends or whatever, and they're talking, to, they're talking to you and then they're like this, they're suddenly like, um, yeah. and then they sort of trail off and then kind of pick up the conversation again. And you're just like, you know, so we're, we're not even, even in our personal lives, we've we're losing the art of being present and listening to people and actually taking an interest in what they're saying because we're convinced that oh maybe there's something more interesting here or something and now what have i communicated to you when i do that i've communicated to you that you're not that important to be honest there's other things far more important and or i might be missing thing. something i might be missing yeah. it's a scarcity yeah. it's actually scarcity operating because it's what am i missing Right. And like you said, maybe Mm -hmm. there's something better. There's something better. It's coming from a place of lack. But when you come from a place of abundance, you're coming from a place that I can just be here right now with you. And this is the most richest, most valuable place that I can possibly be. And all those things are going to be there for, for afterwards. Yeah, we, and, and the great thing about that, Nicole, is that it's a conscious choice, right? You're making yes. a conscious choice. So it's not like it's something that's beyond your control. There are so many things, as you just mentioned, all the things going on in the world, there's so many things that are beyond your control. But being present and actually taking an interest in what somebody is saying, that's completely within your control. And it's more efficient. I'm a big believer in and one of my strengths is actually uh, as a maximizer. And, you know, achiever and all that kind of stuff as well. If you look, if you know the strengths finder and, mm-hmm. uh, but the, but the maximizer is maximizing potential, maximizing efficiency. And quite honestly, it is far more efficient to be right in the now in the conversation. You get a lot more accomplished in less time. And then you can go on to the next moment and the next moment and the next moment and you, and you operate that way. Do you need to can take into consideration the future. Absolutely. Right. But there's a time and place for that. So if you're divided right now, then you're kind of half here, half there, and you're, you're not focused and you're not efficient and you're not getting anything done really, really well. But when you are a hundred percent right here, then it's like, I'm just right here. I'm going to take, I'm going to make the most of this moment. And then the most of this moment, and then the most of this moment, And then I can create some incredible things. And that's actually, when you think of salespeople who are successful over time, is they're able to just make the most of 
opportunities. We hear that a lot, right? It's they're able to make the most of the moment right here, right now, next moment, next moment. I'm always just right in the moment. Yeah, and I, I love that. That's a that's a fantastic way of, of putting it because it it's like that when people uh you know set goals for themselves or whatever. Sometimes they set lofty goals and then which is great and 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 that's to be encouraged. But then they sort of go, wow, that's so far away. Instead of as as what you just pointed out is it's one foot in front of the other. And you said take it moment by moment and be in that moment, take that step forward and 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 it accumulates over time. But that's that's a that's a completely different way of looking at it than possibly the the pervasive culture is telling us today about everything's about shortcuts about easy and all of that and what you're talking about is focus and clarity yes well a lot of the hacks there's some there's some really effective hacks if you will life hacks and sales hacks and so forth um it comes back to motive right is my motive to try to do less or is my motive coming from a place of scarcity ultimately that I don't have enough time so I need to hack things I need to take my machete and start hacking things away right or is it coming from a place of efficiency and I want to make the most of there's two different energies in that and mm-hmm. so if it's if it's designed to be efficient to be to make the most of every moment then great but if it's done from a we know that it's like, oh, I'm so busy and I'm so rushed. Oh my gosh, I'm so important. You know, I have so much going on, right? Like that's really what it's implying because I'm so busy, busy, busy is, um, is it, you know, when you're coming from that place is like, you're actually operating from that place of scarcity. And then there's never enough time. There's never enough opportunities. There's never enough connection. And so you're living in that never enough. I'm never enough. It's never enough. They're never enough. The sale is never enough. The the goal is never enough, right? And so when I'm coming from that place, I'll never be happy. There's never going to be enough. But if I am enough and I get that I'm enough and I get that I can just be in this moment and make the most of and the richness of this moment. It's like when you eat dinner, do you eat it and you just like wolf it down? Or do you actually savor the bites or do you savor it? It actually will give you um, more nutrients and it won't be, there won't be so much indigestion is when you're trying to shove it down. And I get a lot of times people will say to me, ah, so what I need to do is I need to get more into my day. And I say, well, actually what might be the answer is you need to release some things and get some more margin. There was a guy um, I spoke to was a partner of an MGA in Canada um, mutual fund dealership in Canada, 1400 advisors. And we were having this conversation about this. And he said, you know, one of my uh, advisors, he's such a hard charging, really hard worker and so forth sales guy. And he said, I told him, if you would just slow down, you would double your business. Mm -hmm. And that's counterintuitive for most salespeople is I need to go faster, but there is a point when you go faster, I mean, if you're doing nothing, then yeah, obviously, you know, you need to step it up. But if you're continuing to go faster and faster and faster, there's a point where the car goes out of control. Yeah. yeah. And, and you lose returns. the effectiveness. Yeah. There's a law of diminishing returns. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. And, and what you just said there about efficiency versus easy. I mean, I think that's a really critical point for people to take away. Yeah. I mean, we are here. We're all about efficiency and getting things done as as efficiently and effectively as possible. Uh, but not for the not to make life easy. It's to make life to make things more effective. And I think that's a fantastic question for people to ask themselves. Like, am I really trying to be efficient so I can bring more value to those around me, to the to my prospective customers, to my teammates, to whatever, or people I manage, or am I just trying to make life easy for myself? And I think that's a fun. I, I just think that's a fundamental question people should ask themselves and and be really honest because let's face it, sometimes we do take the easy road. That's um, all of us, but uh, and the other part is the scarcity. I mean, I love that too. It's it, it, it's it's great. Is that you know you're just constantly trying to fill things, and that idea of taking a step back, uh, reducing things to increase things. I mean, that's a very powerful uh, concept. And it's more fun. It's more fun to live that way. 
Mm-hmm. No, it, <laughs> hey, I like it, to it, I like to drive cars fast, right? And yeah. and hey, I'm all about auto racing and so forth. <laughs> but even even an Ayrton Senna or a Michael Schumacher mm-hmm. or whoever, like they can only go so fast. Then their improvements actually come from what the team is doing behind the scenes. Yeah. It's set up. It's how the car is engineered to, that gives them the flow, not just yeah. how fast you can go and in, in, in the mileage, if you will. Yeah, and they were and they were always um, set apart because they were the ones who knew the exact right moment to break and the exact right moment to accelerate again, and they could do it like later than everybody else and earlier than everybody else because they had it f- figured out properly. And I think that's a that's a great metaphor as well is to know exactly to know to when to apply the brake and then to know to when to apply the accelerator. That's right. Yeah, you yeah. They, many times they actually won. And you think about it, they actually won in the corners. Yeah. That's where they, that's what actually made the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a phenomenal metaphor for life. Look at that. We just come up with a great metaphor for life. It's a, uh, it's always, it's in the corners. You win in the corners, <laughs> how you approach the corners, how you approach the corners and how you come out of the corners. Um, listen, Nicole, this has been fantastic. And all of Nicole's information is going to be b- below this video. And as you can tell from the, uh, from the interview i mean there's a lot of great stuff that uh, nicole can share with you and you have your own podcast as well so that's fantastic if you want to l- listen uh, to more before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do yeah sure i mean as as we've been talking about coaching i coach leaders and entrepreneurs to be able to better themselves so they can be they can be the best leader and they can be the best uh, impactor that uh that is that they're able to be and so um yeah then go check out my podcast leaders of transformation go to the the website leaders transformation.com my coaching information is up there but i love building great leaders and i believe this world needs more great leaders at every level and every arena so um mm-hmm. and and leadership is a lot of what we've been talking about right here you know and it's how you are showing up and then how you were leading us is not so much about how many followers you have. It's about how many, a great leader, an example of a great leader would be somebody who's, who's able to build other leaders. That's yeah. the, that's how, you know, you think about when we can look in history, right? The greatest leaders built other leaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's a great point. Um, and yeah, the world does need uh, more great leaders. In fact, the world just needs some good leaders right now. We would, <laughs> yeah, good would be good. Great. Good would be a good would be a step up right now. <laughs> um, listen, thanks again. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.